In fairness, let's listen now, all of us gentlemen. This is what Phil Graham told the Washington Times. Quote, you've heard of mental depression. This is a mental recession. We may have a recession. We haven't had one yet. We have sort of become a nation of whiners. You just hear this constant whining, complaining about a loss of competitiveness. American decline. Well, we've never been more dominant. We've never had more natural advantages than we have today. Jim Cramer, a economic and political autopsy, please. Well, first, can I say, I'm actually, I like Phil Graham. And I think the second part of what he said is true. We've never been more competitive. We own the new technology world, which is the world to be able to drill cleaner, the world to be able to make products better. We are dominant. But the whining thing, I mean, hey, wait a second. If, if you're paying $3 more than you did seven years ago at the pump, if, if your food price has doubled, don't you really have something to whine about? I was wondering, Pat, about the old thing about Jimmy Carter and Malays, and you guys back in the 80s certainly took advantage of that little stink bomb. I'm wondering if, you're, if the goose is good as the gander here. Are you going to say that this was a mistake to blame the uh, customer for the lousy service, if you will, economically speaking? Well, look, Phil Graham has always had sort of the bedside manner of Nurse Ratchet. He is really good, Chris, on spending. He is really good on taxes. But this was a very foolish, politically, politically foolish thing for him to say. I think McCain was brutal in the way he treated him. But the truth is, Chris, we've lost three and a half million manufacturing jobs under George Bush. It is directly related to the free trade policies of McCain and Phil Graham. The dollar has lost half of its value against the euro. The United States of America exported fewer cars to the world than Mexico exports to us. If these fellas, this is a problem with the Republican Party of today. It is addicted to this free trade ideology, which right. has driven away the Reagan Democrats. It is killing manufacturing in the United States. Jim, well, I, I disagree with Pat. I have well, to let disagree me have with Phil Pat. Graham react. Let okay. Phil Graham react and disagree first before you, Jim. Here's what he said. I'm not going to retract any of it, any word of it. Every word I said was true. When I said we've become a nation of whiners, I'm talking about our leaders. I'm not talking about our people. We've got every kind of excuse in the world about oil price. We've got speculators. The oil companies to blame. But too many people don't have a program to get on with it. A job the job of producing. If you listen to our leaders, we can't compete against Mexico, for God's sake. If they don't think we can compete with Mexico, who can we compete with? Well, he's a Texan, not saying very nice words about our neighbor down there, but, but it seems to me, Jim, he's challenging Pat right there. Yes, he is. Look, uh, I, I have to tell you, we are become an unbelievable nation of manufacturers again. And Pat, I know that you think that free trade is the, the end, and I do not like the communist Chinese, and I always call them the communist Chinese. They are ridiculous traders. They wreck world trading. But I do think that a lot of our great American companies like Deere and Caterpillar, Eaton, the great American companies, Emerson, the company I, I'm proud to work for, General Electric, we really do need free trade because without it, we do not have enough economic growth in this country to sustain it. Now, that's uh, a Republican Jim vote. All right, let me respond to that. Okay. Why is it that China is growing at 12% and the United States is growing at 1%? we got great manufacturing companies, but all of them are becoming greater by outsourcing their factories, their plants, their jobs to China, to Vietnam, to Mexico, all over the world. What happened when one of six manufacturing jobs in America disappears under George Bush? Do you okay. understand, Jim and Phil yeah, Graham? No, I do. And I... We're in trouble in Michigan and Ohio? No, I understand, but I do think that we have become a very an inexpensive place to work. I see jobs coming back to this country. Again, no help of the government whatsoever. I'm just trying to say, Pat, that I celebrate the American working man for having to be able to reduce the cost that he develops things and producing by far the best products in the world for solving the major problems of the world, cleaner water, cleaner air, cl cleaner drilling. Okay, you know, We're great at this, Pat, and we, need not, we well, cannot yeah, be uh, shut out of these other markets. Well, look, look what's, what has happened to General Motors and Ford. General Motors used to produce half the cars sold in the United States of America. Toyota's outrunning it. Both of these companies are on the edge of bankruptcy. Going on, look at Fannie Mae and, the, and Freddie Mac. The Wall Street Journal today says that could cost the pot taxpayers $5 trillion if they go I agree. Under. I We're agree. They're insolvent. Okay. They're insolvent. Uh, They're insolvent. I agree. But, Gentlemen, but GM me, uh, has become me, uh, a great exporter. We are a great exporter of cars, we GM. Are importing. What are you okay. talking about? We're importing no, 800 GM's billion dollars. GM is going to export more cars than it's going to sell okay. in this country. Uh, okay. We should not be damning GM. They're being killed by oil. They're trying to do everything to right. save them from you guys. Okay, let's go back to McCain. Here he is distancing himself from Phil Graham, his economic advisor. Let's take a listen. I don't agree with Senator Graham. I believe that the 
that the person here in Michigan that just lost his job isn't suffering from a mental recession. I believe the, the mother here in Michigan around America who is trying to get enough money to educate their children isn't whining. America is in great difficulty and we are experiencing enormous economic challenges as well as others. Phil Graham does not speak for me. I speak for me. Okay, here's Senator Obama reacting to Phil Graham's comments. Let's listen to that. Senator Graham uh, then deemed the United States, and I quote, a nation of whiners. Ho! Oh. A nation of whiners. Now this comes after Senator McCain recently admitted that his energy proposals uh, you know, for the gas tax holiday and the drilling will have mainly, quote, psychological benefits. Uh, I, I want all of you to know that America already has one Dr. Phil. <laughs> Hey, guy. Guy. Hey, guy. Hey, guy. Pat, this is too delicious. What would old Dutch Reagan say if he heard the Democrats say we're all a bunch of whiners, that we're in a mental state, that the economy's just swimming out there and we're blowing it with our lousy morale? What would Dutch Reagan, your old hero, say? He would have handled it just like Barack Obama. We got ourselves another Dr. Phil. <laughs> that was very funny. Very, And he's right. The truth is, the reality is, awful lot of Americans are hurting terribly, not only the people, investors in the retirement, the manufacturing class, a lot of folks having to have two jobs. I mean, this is a, this is, I mean, Phil Graham, God bless him, he's working for UBS, some Swiss bank he's a vice president of, for heaven's sake. So what does he know about guys in, in, in Michigan? Pat, you know more, obviously. Let me ask you about another exciting development. The other day, it didn't get mentioned right at the time, but the Democrats have jumped on. Here's John McCain on Monday talking about that old third rail of American politics, the Social Security system. Americans have got to understand that we are paying present-day retirees with the taxes paid by young workers in America today. And that's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace, and it's got to be fixed. Well, the question here, Pat, is here's a guy opening up that old can of worms, ripping the scab off the old issue that hurts every Republican, including Reagan in the old days, of saying there's something wrong with a system where workers pay for retirees in current dollars. He's saying we've got to have a different system than that. Is that smart politics, Pat? It is not smart politics to raise the Social Security issue and the funding of it, because now, Chris, what is going to happen is, okay, Senator McCain, how are the retirees going to get their benefits and who's going to provide them if not today's workers? And then he is into the can of worms you describe. I don't know. I mean, after the Jesse Jackson day, it looked like a good day for Republicans. But, I mean, uh, these guys, I mean, they can't stand good luck. Well, what about it, Jim? Because I think it's a hard bit of ideology here, and fair or not, uh, smart or not, Republicans don't like the idea of Social Security as it is, whereby when you're working and you're young, you're 18 years old, your first job, you're, you're delivering newspapers at 14, you're kicking into a system that's going to somebody making seven, 75 years old. That's the way it's always worked. He's saying that's a disgrace. Uh, you know, I've got to tell you, McCain is the most disorganized la lack of any knowledge whatsoever about economics. The real issue, as Pat said, is the whole banking system is falling apart. If you have money in the stock market, they look, the Republicans want you to invest it yourself. You would have lost a fortune. I mean, is that yeah. what we want? Is a bailout of another bailout of another? Another bailout? Why, when is either Obama or McCain going to address the fact that almost every major bank in this country is insolvent, that Fannie and Freddie right. are insolvent? Those are the real problems facing America. Your house keeps losing value, and all they want to do is, like, cut taxes. Oh, and by the way, on this energy stuff, Obama's in favor of ethanol, which made it so your barbecue cost twice as much as right. it did last year. He's wanting to talk about energy. Pat, uh, to make that point, to embroider that one more time, suppose uh, the Chinese curse had visited George Bush. And we'd go into a pay into the Social Security system and you put your money into the stock market. Imagine the last couple of months what the country would be like. <laughs> 
Well, we, a lot of us would have our Social Security checks nipped a little bit, Chris. You're exactly. But look, that makes the argument against these private accounts, which make it much more difficult. But John McCain, really, just as a practical matter, you don't mention Social Security and get into that ball of wax in the middle of a campaign. Yeah. As for the Belarus embassy, I mean, I thought <laughs> that was a little savage, didn't you, on one of your main men? 